I started back in the 80s, and then how'd you make the transition to getting your own place, your own business? Well, um, the Violin House of Weaver was established way back in the 1800s, and we just continued their tradition of servicing the National Symphony folks and the Opera House folks that uh, are here in the Washington, D.C. area, as well as Baltimore, and even folks drive up from Richmond to have us work on their instruments. Okay, so you were doing that for quite some time. Then around the mid-1990s, what happened? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I basically uh, took over the retail and service part of the violin shop, the Violin House of Weaver, and uh, Weavers continued to manufacture instruments, and uh, they still handle the very, very expensive instruments, things 200000 and up, that kind of thing. Um, we basically take care of... Uh, young professionals and people in the you know symphonies locally here and also we manufacture we actually make instruments here in the shop which the weavers really weren't doing they were uh, making production instruments for students but we actually everybody who works here makes instruments as well as plays them so uh, that's why you see these pieces here on the t counter here. Right, let's talk about this, because let's start about uh, you know, the beginning stages of mm -hmm. making an instrument right here. Talk to me about this. Well, any violin that's made by hand from scratch, and even the factory instruments, all start out as big chunks of wood coming out of a tree. Mm -hmm. So they chop down the tree and they make it into blocks of wood, and then after it's been seasoned, we start cutting on it and carving it to the right shape. So this would start out with a template drawn on a block of wood and then we take a bandsaw and we carve around and make that contour. Okay. And then we start carving on it until we can get the what they call the volute, which is basically the turn here. Okay. And you can see how that just fits right in that piece yeah. of wood. That's, what's, that's what comes out of there. And you were saying a lot of people wonder about how the curves, how do you get that? And with this piece right. of wood you were going to well, show this, us. This is actually hard rock maple. This is the same thing they make uh, bowling alley f and basketball floors out of. And okay. believe it or not, it's very, very flexible ah. once you cut it the right way. And then, of course, we steam it and uh, use a specially shaped iron that allows it to be bent to fit the side of the violin like that. Ah, uh, pretty cool. Okay, so it is doable. It is oh, doable. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Let's talk They've about been doing it for 300 years now. Right, right. So, so there you go. So let's talk about this piece right here. Is this something that you're going to be repairing? Uh, well, this is a violin that's just finished being restored. Uh, we bought it in Paris uh, a couple months back. And uh, we basically import uh, antique instruments from Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Paris is one place uh, that we go a couple times a year. And this was an instrument that was made back probably around 1910, and it needed a little bit of restoration before somebody could uh, play it regularly. Okay, what just, are you going to do to it? Are you going to put some strings on at it? At this point, it just needs strings and the bridge that I was working on in the back. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that. We have some video of you working on a bridge. Mm -hmm. what, what exactly well, were you doing there? Basically, this little piece of wood, if I grab the, the pochette violin, this little piece of wood holds the strings off the fingerboard. Okay. Okay, so that uh, people can play them. And each one of these little pieces of wood is actually carved to fit that particular instrument, and the top of it is curved to fit the curve of the fingerboard. So each mm. one is fit. It's not like a light bulb that you can just screw in. It's actually a, each one of those is cut by hand, just like the guys in the back are doing. You see a lot of them working on. This is a piece that gets replaced, just like uh, the tires on your car. They wear out and, they, and you need new ones. So let's uh, talk about some of the things that you do here. So we talked about how you make your own line of instruments, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then also you do a lot of repairs and adjustments. Yes. How yeah, often yeah. are people bringing in for adjustments, and what percentage of your business would you say if you had to break all that down? Wow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, typically, if you play a violin on a regular basis, you need to get the strings changed and the bow hair changed about once every six months. Um, if you're playing more than, say, an hour a day, then like some of the professionals are in here every six weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have folks, as I say, from the National Symphony or the Washington Opera that come in and we take care of their instruments for them so that they can maintain their professional sound. You stay pretty busy. I mean, you've got a number of work orders here. I mean, it sounds like business is doing really well for you. Uh, for us, it's very, we're, we're very active. We continue a, a long tradition of being the, the, the go-to place here in the Washington area for folks anywhere from, you know, all the way up in New Jersey, all the way down into the Carolinas. All right. Well, you're doing something good over here, Dalton. It was a pleasure to speak with you. My pleasure. Thank you so very much. We appreciate nice, that. Nice of you to come by. Yes. Nice of you to invite us. And if you'd like to find out more information about the Potter Violin Company, just log on to our website at mpt.org and click on Your Money in Business. All right, Jeff, that'll wrap it up here from Bethesda. I'm going to have Dalton go back there and show me a few other things. You do that for me? You bet. All right. Back to you.